Looking for a way to get healthy? The Chef You and I program has the answer. Catherine Raker and chefs from around the nation will teach even the most inexperienced how to cook. Come into their kitchen and watch them take ordinary foods with loads of calories and fat and turn those foods into healthier dishes. You will be the first to get tips and ideas on foods that are easy to prepare. Now let's join Catherine and today's chef and learn how to make today's recipes. Hi, this is Catherine Raker of The Chef You and I, and I have my favorite guest chef, Father Andrew Umberg from St. Joseph's in North Bend, Ohio, who loves to cook. Now, I heard a rumor that you're going to be doing Hungarian goulash. Is that correct? Sometimes rumors are reliable. Yes, I know. Got that I know. Well, I tried making it last week. Okay. And you're on goulash. Okay. Yes. And I want to tell you something. Uh, we used my, the hot, not the hot pot, but the one that does things really well. It does the instant pot or the instant thing? pot. Okay. And I got to tell you, they do everything in it. They do the, uh, the browning and all of it. And guess how long it takes before the beef and everything gets tender, Father? 25 to 30 minutes. That's fast. It's That's great. Fast. It's great. And I'll tell you what. It turned out absolutely beautiful, but I know yours is going to be better. Well, it so. might not be, but I was afraid I would ruin it. See, I don't want to come on as the rookie. Now, you are the veteran hot pot person. Yes. I am the veteran. I can teach you. Goulash person. I can um, teach you. Well, right? that would be great. That, that would, would be, be great. great. But I was scared that I would mess it up the first time that somehow something would go terribly wrong. And I wouldn't have ever let that happen. Well... I, well, was, I was afraid, and I just cared too much about our viewers. That's right. <laughs> and you know and what? Know you do too. We're growing. I told you. Oh, that's no, fine. not okay, that okay, way. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> no, that's funny. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you are always funny. Anyhow, um, actually, we're growing in not only radio stations. We're in Philadelphia. We're in Kansas City, both Missouri and Kansas for our radio shows. And we're in Greenberg, South Carolina. Greenberg, okay, I knew I knew there was Greenberg, Pennsylvania. I did not know there was There's a Greenberg. There's a Greenberg, South Carolina, and we're going to be in Florida uh, with a new station. How well, about that? that? But television, we might be going back to the state that I really love, New Jersey. Oh, nice. Cherry Hill. We'll see. Okay, so today we're making your Hungarian goulash, right? Yes. And what's the first thing you want me to do? I would love it if you would chop that onion. Right. And I will chop this one. Okay. Since we need two medium onions. Right. And these are medium to large onions, which is just fine. Right. Um, I've never been one to. Okay. In baking, I realize you have to measure everything, but you know. Yeah. yeah anything that's kind of close, it's like horseshoes and. Right. So things. what have you been doing since the pandemic? And by the way, we're both, we don't have it. Um, I. Uh, actually, um, I'm over it, and I got the letter from the Board of Health, and believe it or not, uh, I feel great. I'm back to my real self. Oh, well, good, good. Not good. contagious. I probably could give my blood, you know, or my plasma. Oh, your plasma. You ought to do that. Right. I'm thinking. Especially if I get it. Oh, if you get it, why would you get it? I don't know. I mean, why does anyone? Oh, okay. It's not really an existential choice. I just hope I don't get it. Okay. But if I do, well, you can I be tested. You, you know, now we're everybody's getting. Everybody's going to be able to take the test. Yes. So you never know. Um, but my, you know, that my daughter was worried about my age. Right. I don't know why, but she was, because I'm in. I'm in great health, actually. Thank God for that. Right. Yes. So that helped me, Father. Um, basically with um, getting over it and um, actually my husband didn't get it but he's doing great and I just want to say thank you to everyone that prayed for me especially from our parish and also all of our radio stations because that prayer helps a lot true yes I was part of the campaign yeah so anyhow so what have you been doing lately well, um, we've been live streaming a lot of masses. Uh -huh. and, uh, 
But um, I've been watching a lot of YouTube. Yeah, have you been watching our shows on YouTube? A little bit. Oh, good to hear that. So um, I promised our friend Mike Davis that I would give him all this DVD so they could play it at Bailey Place for the residents. What nice. do you think? I think that's nice. Since I can't go there, it's another way to do that and yes. to let them share. And um, we lost a really good friend from our parish, Bob Steinberg's wife, Mary, right? Yes, that was a sad moment. That was sad. But I lost another friend who used to be on my show that was an auctioneer. That was Don Bates. And he was so funny. I loved him to death. And so anyhow, there's your onions. Okay. Could I have a little bit of butter? Sure. Hold on a second. I'll get it out. Okay. So Oops. our first uh, thing uh, with this goulash is we're going to cook some onions and butter. Now, I have not had a lot of Hungarian goulash in my life. When I did have some, I had it in Retz, Austria. So really? Not, not too, yeah, part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire at one time. So mm -hmm. I'm sure it was good goulash. Then mm. on the way out um, from, from where I was staying, we, we went, went, went to the airport mm -hmm. and there was a place that had goulash and I had to have it again. So anyway, right. so I had to, and that was at the Austria Vienna Airport. So it couldn't have been bad at the Vienna Airport. No, it couldn't have been bad. Imagine. Right. Okay, so we'll take two tablespoons of butter about right there, right? Right. Okay, and we'll go ahead and put these in this pan. Do you want me to turn it on for you, Father, that since I know the trick? Be, yeah, yeah, that's right. Catherine knows this stove. I do not. I always pick <laughs> the right. wrong one. And I always pick the wrong one. Excuse okay. me, i got to get something out of here for you. Okay. Remember these really fun things? Oh, that's right, the scoops. How nice. Yeah, that's right. Okay, well, once this... Uh, melts. You know what? I'm going to throw a little bit of olive oil in here, too. Oh, right here's there. some olive oil. How right nice. there, Father. How nice. Anyway, I'll go ahead and throw this in here so we can get these these onions going, okay? Right. I'll keep that handy. I hate to, hate to have olive oil more than, you know, out of my reach. I just... Well, it's really, I cook. it's really good for you. That's the most important thing. That so is. you want to put both onions in there? Yeah, although, wow, this was like the multiplication of the onions here. I don't well, know. onions are good, buddy. They're good for you. And I think they thicken a sauce a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, they provide some matter to be in the sauce, so that's nice. Right, right. Now, okay, let's go ahead and do this then. Mm-hmm. We have butter still melting there. and That's good. So tell me what you put in your Hungarian goulash. Well, first I'd like to say something about okay. my beef stew. My beef stew mm -hmm. has beef, mm -hmm. um, onions, celery, mm -hmm. carrots, mm -hmm. and potatoes. Yeah. Okay. Right. So the uh, yeah on onions, carrots, and potatoes are the right. The, wait, onions, carrots, potatoes, and celery. So right. So four four vegetables in there. I do. I put no celery in this. Mm -hmm. But I don't mind putting some carrots in. I've decided we're not going to do potatoes in this tonight. That's fine. Because you have to decide which starch you want with it. And actually, we're not going to actually decide. We're going to put a couple of different ones. But potatoes won't be one of them, at least just regular potatoes. And are you going to serve it over pasta or noodles? Yes. Yes. Okay. Or we might even put the pasta directly in it. That Ooh, might be the lazy man's way of doing it. Yeah, that's the lazy I, man's way of but, doing but, it. But you end up then having all the sauce everywhere. So right. I think that's nice. Right. Um, so... So for uh, uh, the goulash that I have made, I have not put celery in, but all the other three things are fine. Carrots, onions, and potatoes. Right. Tonight we could put a little bit of carrot in there. It might be nice to do that if you have a carrot handy. Yes, yeah, so I have to get it out, but okay. that'll work just a minute. Okay, thank you. And then I'll put in the rest of the onion meanwhile. So as I see it, a Hungarian goulash is really just like a, a beef stew, except for you don't put any celery in it, and you do put a can, a little can of tomato paste in it. And you put in, uh, for your one can of tomato paste, and what about, I have about a pound and a third of meat here, you put in uh, more than two tablespoons of paprika. In fact, maybe we can go three, just short of three tablespoons, and then I'll put some cayenne pepper because I can't cook without cayenne pepper. As you well, know. I have to go into the other refrigerator during break 
And we're okay. gonna we're gonna break right we'll here. We're okay. gonna we're gonna break right here. Perfect. Okay. We're gonna take a short break and we'll be back with Father Andrew Umberg and his famous Hungarian goulash right after these important messages on the Chef You and I. It's difficult to find a person in America right now whose life has not been impacted by the opioid epidemic. In fact, a recent report found that enough opioids were prescribed in 2016 for every man, woman, and child in the nation to have 36 pills each. Addiction is taking a toll on millions of lives across America, but together we can reduce the devastation and work to end addiction. And it all starts with prevention. Now more than ever, it is important that we educate and empower patients to talk to their doctors about their post-surgical pain management options. If we could reduce the number of opioids prescribed after surgery by just 10%, it would mean almost 332 million fewer leftover pills available each year for potential diversion and misuse. These prescription painkillers are not our only option for treating pain, especially after surgery. To learn more, visit planagainstpain.com. We found, we're back on the chef, you and I, and we found the carrots, Father. Good. And so you said a quarter, okay, that works. A quarter works. of an inch, yeah, we've got baby carrots we're starting off with. I'm gonna grab some, okay? Yeah, and go ahead. We've got a baker's dozen. Yeah. Again, and... no, if, if these were regular carrots, I'd say get out about three of them maybe, mm -hmm. you know, unless you mm -hmm. like carrots and put in five of them, you know. Yeah. If you don't, put in fewer. I don't think the flavor would be too much different. These are really, these are nice, Father. When they you, are. I, like I them. use these in salads and everything. I love them. You know, I really like are the ones actually that are in, you know, that are cut in strips for salads. See, as I'm doing this, I make sure my, I'm rocking this knife just, I know you have a different kind of knife here, but I'm just yeah, saying I know. to people I that usually, I, I keep I my usually. fingers all out of the way as I'm rocking that knife. Yeah, you don't want to, you want to make sure that you don't, touch cut yourself right that's right. important and here if you can hand me that scoop or i'll here you go actually i guess i don't need it too oh, quickly but here yeah. we go but well, we have them ready to go wherever we have them ready we want. to go right. I, I, during the break i put a little bit of salt in maybe a, a quarter teaspoon in just to keep these onions cooking right ideally they're not brown we just want to sweat them really nice. can i put this in there yeah we'll go ahead and just leave this here for now um We'll go ahead and leave the carrots here for oh, now. Oh, okay. Because so what's going on? Step. Let's okay. see. Can we see the sweat? No, we can't. Sure. I, I, well, I'll, I'll, I'll hold them up, and yes, we'll watch. Yeah, they look the beautiful, sweat. Father. Yes, they yes, look good. So. so they get kind of a. You can see them when they they get really soft. Um, they yeah, kind they of change nice and, change in color start, a they little. They start getting nice and clear. And yeah, and then you get that wonderful oniony smell in the house. That's Ooh. always a nice thing. Oh, wonderful. Other than garlic cooking or baking cooking, onions cooking in butter is about my favorite. It is my favorite, too. I love, I love onions. And I used to love garlic, but I can't digest it. That's a problem. So it's not the, you know, it's, I've learned to use other spices to, to make things better. So we'll see what happens. Okay. So how long do you, is that about done enough to put that in? Yeah, you just do that a cu couple of minutes. And, right. Uh, but we still won't put the carrots in. I'm going to put all the carrots over here, if that's okay. That's fine. My hands are clean with my gloves on. No, that's on. fine. I trust you completely. We've been, and I've been washing my hands constantly, as we all have, hopefully, over these last. Uh, and not touching your weeks. face. That's really important. Drinking okay, lots to. of water, Father. Okay. I'll and I am starting on my lemon shots again. Oh, okay. But cause guess what it does? It helps with your digestion and it helps you lose weight a little bit. Yes. So. Why would I want that? I'm I just kidding. I don't know, Father. I lost 11 pounds. I think I mm. got it all back, though. Because my, because guess what? My taste buds, I couldn't taste anything or smell anything, so nothing tasted good. So we are going to do that first. Do you want me to, do you? Yeah. If I could have a serving bowl, I think I know. Or I, if I can just have a um, I'm going to throw these on a plate if that's agreeable to you. That's fine. Do you want a white or dark plate? Um, I'd say a white one. You got it right there. Great. I'll take this then. Good. Okay, so this next step, unfortunately, we have to evacuate the uh, 
the, the pan onions, yeah, or the, the pans, the pan here because, and I, it's not that I forgot this, it's just you can't really saute the onions once you do the, and we don't want to dirty too many dishes. So how about if, um, <laughs> here we go, if you'll go ahead and scoop uh, uh, I'll do it, uh, I'll do it, Father. Uh, no, I'm going to turn this thing for you so that it's, it goes quickly. Okay. Whoops. All right. You can hold the plate a little lower. Oh, I'm sorry. Or, I'm or maybe sorry, you can't. Mother. I don't know. I don't know. Don't well, worry about it. Well, we had plenty of onions. So, so don't here, worry about try it. Try to get some more in, please. Yeah, okay, I will. Did you leave that heat on, though? I did. That's oh. okay. Okay, we got enough. We're, we're fine, Father. Okay. Oh, Lord. Okay, so this so, is what it looks like, right, Father? Yes, there's okay, your Okay, I'm going to put nice, it right there. And I'm going to turn okay. this. Do you want to leave that on? Uh, I yes, yes, we do here. If you okay, me, I'll go ahead and put in now a little bit of canola oil. Hmm. I'm putting in uh, a good um, three tablespoons. So okay. That's almost a quarter cup. Okay. And next. What? If I could have that, um, that flour. You got it right there. Okay, and then what I'll do is, I have a little kosher salt here. I just like kosher salt, and, and I'm gonna go ahead and put about a teaspoon of kosher salt on this meat, uh, beef for stew. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then I'm gonna start putting the some flour, flour on. on. Okay, let me just get this plastic over there so you don't have that problem. Okay. Since this is going to go in the dishwasher soon anyway. That's right. Pretty cool, huh? Okay. Yes, my mom used to always roll this in a bowl. And then I did that a couple of times. I ended up having these big caked up, you know. Mess. Yeah. And I thought maybe the beef wouldn't know. Any better? Okay. If I just threw do you it want in to there, use that or do you want I would like to use that. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. And then, if I just put it in there, having salted it a little bit, right? And then I'm breaking it apart, really nice. Right. Okay. Now I'm going to corral it all together a little bit. Okay. And then you're going to do at what? the risk of shocking you. I'm going to throw the rest of this on the top of here. So okay. I'll show, I'll show this in a moment here. I'm going to show this. A pile of flour on there, and believe me, I have found yes. That's about a third. Then, that's about a third of a cup of flour. Yeah, a third of a cup. cup of flour all together here. Right. And okay, there it is. He's coming over so, to show. Okay, okay, Our cameraman nice. is coming over to show it. You can leave it right there, buddy. Well, but okay. this might be nicer. All right. Okay. That looks really good. So I'll let it. I, I'm. We're, we're, what we're doing here is we're scorching the meat. We're not just trying to make it. Brown, we're trying to get it dark brown in some places, right? Okay. Because we want that nice, that nice um, flavor. And the problem is you got to make sure you have enough oil. Canola might not be the ideal oil, just what they call regular vegetable oil, whatever that has in it. It has a bunch of different things. They don't, they're kind of non-committal, but I find that that works a little bit better for it. Do you want some more canola oil or some more oil or what? Uh, maybe I'll try a little bit of olive oil on okay. here with it. Okay, I'll get it for you. Okay. Here you go. Thank you. Okay. You're and welcome. Then I'll put in another tablespoon or two. Yeah, I'll do another two tablespoons. That's very precise, as you know. Two Thank tablespoons. You. Yeah, we know that. So this is starting to cake to the pan a little bit. Right. And don't get me wrong, it will do the same thing and whether you coat the beef first or not. Okay? Okay. That, the thing I love about that pan, do you know how old that pan is, Father? About 40 years old. It's older than me. Huh. Yeah, sure. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I've been, nice, nice thought, huh? Nice try. Anyway, right, Father. Okay. So now I'm getting out my black pepper. 48, Father, according oh. to my... 48 years old. Okay, well, there's my age. Not yeah, really. right. Okay. We know. So anyway, now I'm putting in about a quarter teaspoon of pepper. Okay. So now we've got nice peppery meat. 
Mm -hmm. I might put in another quarter teaspoon later on. Okay. Starting to look good, huh? Yeah, we're starting to get some nice little dark brown Spots places. Spots to it. Yeah. So how long do you actually cook it? How long, Father, did it? It'll eventually simmer for two hours. That's where the real cooking is going right. to occur. So this right. is just browning to get flavor. Okay. Oh, that okay. looks good, Father. It smells very nice. Right. We still have the beautiful smell of the onions in here. And now we have this meat as well. Okay. And now what? And my, let's see. Do we add the onions next? Back in? Um, actually, our next thing will be to add the wine. So. I have wine over there. How wonderful. And I'll take this. That one. This Cabernet. Right. And um, it's best to use leftover wine if you have it. And what I'll do is I'll buy a very inexpensive wine in the size double this. I guess it's uh, 1,500 milliliters, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'll keep that in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. And I don't care if it goes a little bit bad. You know, I try to keep, keep the, the wine, the, the alcohol content in there mm -hmm. and keep the cap on well enough. I know somebody that once said, What's that? Don't put anything in your food that you wouldn't drink. And you know what I say? Nonsense. I'll put garbage wine in food as long as there's nothing wrong with the wine. I mean, nothing poison. Not true garbage. But I mean, I am not looking to drink this. I'm not trying. No. I'm, I'm pouring well, it on meat, and that's going to soak Okay, in. but you can it's also gonna... have a glass of wine with this, too. Well, that's true, too. Right. Okay, okay, that looks really, really good, Father. It looks good, except for, wow, this thing is really... I can draw little lines with this. It's nice to have a wooden paddle. I don't see one here. Hold but, on. Um, Let's see what we got. We can get a little bit more um, no, severe with it. We don't. Okay, okay. and that's fine. What I'm going to do is borrow your spatula then. That would be the best thing. And you want me to do it? That's okay. That's okay. It's okay. Kind of he's getting coming it. Coming along swimmingly. So the, the wonderful thing about making Hungarian goulash is that it's really, and, and we still have, even during April and May or whatever months, sometimes they can be cool. So it's a hearty, uh, family fun kind of dish that your whole family can enjoy. And since Father didn't put garlic in it, Catherine can have it. So um, the wonderful thing that I, I use Father on the top of it, after you know you put it over your noodles, right, mm -hmm. is sour cream, and I love it. <laughs> so that's kind of what I did. I have to take a little drink of water here. Okay, now as you see, yeah, I will show the camera in a moment. Right. Um, here, you can what? bring it over here, Father. Look. Okay, well, okay. Okay. I want to show, look, I've got a really crudded up pan. Yeah. Okay? Mm-hmm. Now watch this. I okay. Will, so now we're going to deglaze the pan. We're letting it cool off a little bit here. Okay. Woo! Like this. Well, that smells good. By the way, this wine is fine. I have not, not, nothing against this wine, but as you know, I, even if it weren't, I have very low standards, you know, for wine. Actually, it's not a very expensive Cabernet, by the way. Well, good. I didn't think good you... Good, because I, yeah, I don't think you want to take something very expensive to drink and put it... Uh, don't get me wrong, it wouldn't be bad. And if you have leftover, it probably... It might enhance your dish a little bit. Yes, that's true. Um, so, there we go. So now Ooh, we have... That looks beautiful, doesn't it? Yeah, it kind of looks... Uh, it's kind of beef and purple sludge now. If you'll hold this for me real Thank quick. Thank you. I will show this. And again, the pan uh, still has some places where it's ba uh, baked on a little bit, but watch this then. Let's take some water. I see you have a nice two cup uh, thing here, you want right? Want me to put some water in it? Yeah, I, well, I, I will either way if you want to do it. Sure. Oh, wait, wait, I'd rather not have chilled water, but maybe You want chilled good. water? No, no. Okay, then use that okay. water over there. Good deal, good, good. deal, okay. All right. And you know what? This is a simple recipe, isn't it, Father? It is. It's not bad. Okay. I'm just making sure I'm not lying to the folks at home. Two it's cups. It's two cups. 
And now I'm putting this in to our nice sludge cooking beef. <laughs> but now watch this, I'm gonna do it again. Oh, wow, two cups, four cups? And we put a cup of wine into, and why? Because goulash is somewhere between a stew and a soup, depending on how much you put in. And I want lots of stuff to spoon up, you know. I know and, you and, and Bill are. Up with it. Yeah, so. Bill and you are like alike. He likes sauce, and you know, in the in the Italian thing, they call it gravy. Yes. But right, but that's exactly. sauce to them, right? Yes, yes, yes. Looks well, good. Here we go. So this is going to have a lot of sauce, and I'm finding that the pan is uh, deglazing pretty nicely. Now that I've got the water in as well. You well, know. that 48-year-old pan, um, I was well, making soup the other day. Uh huh. Almost burned it, and let me tell you, I, you know, it didn't get black or anything. It kind of got brown. So I put it in water in the sink. I got to tell you something, Father. It took me about three minutes to clean it after I soaked it just for a little while. I mean, to me, that's great. And to have these pans as long as I did, and I remember we paid over $1,000 for those pans 48 years ago. And we were poor then, you know? But they lasted a long time. And they're nice to work with. They're they nice are and nice thick. to work. They are very nice pans. Right, okay, so what's next, Father? Okay, so we've already put in, uh, um, a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to put in two more teaspoons. Okay. Because remember, we have lots of water. Uh, lots of water. Lot of, yes, lots of juice. Yes. So what? We have two pints of water. So we have two and a half pints of liquid. So there's one. Yeah. Well, and and this will be a little bit slider. Okay. Okay. So we have about a tablespoon of salt in here. Okay. We need to take a real short break, and we'll be right back, Father, on the Chef You and I. Some think young people are just about selfies. Think again. When I was seven years old, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor. I decided that I wanted to give back to all my nurses and doctors and all the patients that I met through my experiences. I did Water for Flint when I challenged other churches to donate water. In my nonprofit, it helps get kids involved in the community. There are people out there who literally have nothing and Whatever you do, it can make a difference. We empower kids to find their voice through creative writing. And to tell a kid that your voice matters and your experiences matter is really amazing. Selfies? No, selfless. Do you know students who volunteer? Have them apply for a Prudential Spirit of Community Award at spirit.prudential.com. We're back on The Chef You and I with my favorite, wonderful culinary chef or chef, Father Andrew Umberg from our church, St. Joseph in North Bend, Ohio. And you know, how does your mother like, you're from a big family like I am, how does your mother like your cooking? My mom is a wonderful, experienced cook, cooking meals probably, what, probably 340 uh, nights a year for, you know, the whole time. Right, we grew up. right. Seven, seven children, a great mom, great cook. She likes my cooking, but she doesn't seem to think it's much to rave about. And uh, there's, she has different ideas about, right. about how to cook right. than I do. But, uh, right. And maybe she's right. You know, again, de gustibus, as they say. It's a matter of taste. Uh, you know, Is that about, what, German? Uh, no, that's that's Latin. De, de gustibus non disputandum. Wow. Yeah, that, it's like you can't really get in an argument about taste, you know, because no. who, who's to say something really tastes better? Right. So this is for your mom, okay? okay? But guess what, Father? We have a new sponsor. It's called Drop It RX Wine. Well, you know, a lot of people, this was invented by Jennifer Corcoran, and she's from uh, Virginia, and she'd been in the medical field for many years, right? But she had a problem, just like I do, that every time I have a glass of wine, either white or red, my face turns bright red and I get a headache. That's from the sulfites and the tannins. In red wine, it's the tannins. And all it does in red wine is smooth it out. And the sulfites, it 
actually makes them into sulfates. So we're going to use two drops. That's two drops, right? And then all you do, Father, is you just swirl it. It does not change the consistency of the wine. Okay. And guess what? I don't get a red face anymore. So salute to your mom. Mm. To your Change mom. To my mom. And Great. You. Thank you. And you know, wine is really good for mm. you. It's mm -hmm. really, you know, Italians and Germans and Europeans always usually have a glass of wine with dinner. Right or wrong? Well, I think they do. I well, think they do. My, my in Italy, we did. My parents couldn't afford it. So, but the point is, is that it's really, it really does, having a glass of wine can't hurt. And I cook with wine and beer all the time. And I think it, it enhances a lot of times. Yes, it enhances the meal. It enhances life. Right. So what are we doing next, buddy? In fact, a lot of the psalms are about wine. That's true. We're now ready for those onions. So okay. So here you, you go. To, okay, I'll scoop them in, and then. Okay. And then right afterwards, uh, right. Okay, you can go ahead and scoop in the uh, carrots then. Okay, I'll do that. All right. Are you done with that? I'm almost. Okay, and uh, again, this uh, purple thing is now turned into a kind of more of a maroon, kind of a brownish purple right. um, look. Okay, okay, and we're gonna put these. Uh, let me go get the rest. There's more. Okay, and wonderful. That's great. So now you have the carrots. You have the. We're gonna come over there with a the camera for a minute. Okay. Yes, we have carrots. We have onions, and we have, of course, meat and wine. So here we go. This is what it looks like now. Okay, and then uh, with with this mixture, you know, just just uh, moving the spatula along the bottom has cleaned off the pan wonderfully, and that's nice. The deglazing happened there because of the the wine mixture there. Okay, okay, and now I'm going to put in some tomato paste. Now we were going to go with a, a can like this, but if you have some in the refrigerator, you want to use that first. And again, since it doesn't have to be a precise amount. This is about a can's worth, right? Okay. That's close enough. And when in doubt, I'll put in a tiny bit more. Okay. And then I'm going to stir this in a tiny bit. And this is going to start to turn a little bit more red. So now we have a product that's going to look very different from beef stew already because of the redness of the uh, tomato paste. However, it will even be more red when we add that paprika. Catherine, do you want to add the uh, three tablespoons of paprika? Oh, first, I want to show the paprika because uh, the recipe that I read said to use sweet Hungarian paprika. And I said, well, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be that fancy. You know, I've got paprika. I'll just use regular uh, grocery store brand paprika. Well. I bought some. I splurged, though. Okay, so I've got the regular grocery store version, and then I've got this uh, this other one. Now, interestingly, the uh, this says Hungarian paprika. It says imported. It says 100% sweet, delicate. So it's nice. And then I, what I need to do is try to get this. Uh, I'm not very good with my fingernails here. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to pour this. Okay, so it's this very rusty color. If you can see these two, we're going to go with the majority of the, um, the sweet. Can you see that? This is a little bit more deep red, and this is a true rust color. Yeah. And that's what really Hungarian paprika looks like. Okay, well, there we go. <laughs> there You've we seen go. It in other places. I used, to be in, I used to go to Hungary all the time, Father. Okay, <laughs> well, there you go. Well, okay, so we're going to put... A full three tablespoons Here we of this in. So I'm, I'm putting some of the other because I don't think it's going to hurt anything. Okay. Again, we probably got about three tablespoons of material here. That's right. Okay. Okay, Father. And then here it goes. And it goes into the pot. Boom. Got to hit this a little bit. Okay. So now this is going to eventually turn this sauce a very red or a much more rusty color, actually, with this lighter colored mm -hmm. paprika. 
Okay. Okay, and we can see it already a little bit now that, uh, although it's not really mixed in, I really don't have the uh, tomato paste mixed in well. I think I'm going to switch to a spoon for a little bit here. To I get think this. that would work better, Father. Okay, good. I like scraping the bottom of that pan, though, to make sure we don't have a big mess afterwards. Oh, okay. Although I must have just hit a pocket of the uh, tomato paste because now it's really starting to have a nice tomato sauce flavor. Can our producer back me up on that one? Good deal. Okay. That looks beautiful, Father. Yeah, now we see, look, it's, there's a certain thickness to it already, too. Look at this. This is more than just oh, yeah. a watery look to it. And again, I think that's because of the onions as well as the flour that's on the meat. Right. But at the end, we're going to thicken it even more because I'm a thickness freak. And I want... Uh, I want to put in a little bit of cornstarch at the end. That's the way. Actually, that's what they told me to do when I was doing it in the, I call it a hot pot, but it's called a whatever pot. Um, you make a slurry with cornstarch okay. and something else. I'm trying to remember the three ingredients. And then after you cook it all, then you eat it. But you eat it ahead of time, correct? Oh, the cornstarch? No, we'll wait till the end for that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so we'll, Yeah, we'll want to. Okay, so now we have this thing bubbling. Right. And uh, it'd be nice if we could uh, get a, 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 a top, for, top it? for that. Yes. Okay, we can. And we will turn this down then. Okay. We'll turn it way down low. Okay. And then it needs to simmer about two hours. Okay. okay. That's good. So I'm going to give then, it, I'm going to okay. put a top on it. Okay. We have to take a short break, Father. Okay. And while we're doing that, we will come back and you'll see what it really looks like, right? After it's been cooking a while. After it's been cooking a while. And we'll be right back on The Chef, You and I. No more, it's none of my business. No more, he didn't mean it. No more, not my problem. No more, she was flirting with him. No more, she was asking for it. No more, boys will be boys. No more, I'll say something next time. No more bystanding. No more ignorance. No more excuses. No more. We're back on The Chef, you and I. And Father, we are doing Hungarian goulash. And you need to put some more spices in? Yes, yes. Okay. There are a couple of things I haven't put in yet. I mentioned I have to put the cayenne pepper in. Now, if you don't like spicy food, don't put it in. Right. But if you like it, just a little spicy. Remember, we have almost three tablespoons of paprika in there. Okay? okay. And this is kind of uh, cayenne, I think, is a distant relative of paprika. I mm. know. You love it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to put in about... A, a quarter teaspoon, and that's for a big batch. So yeah. if it were if just me, we'd put in about three quarters of a we teaspoon. We know anyway. you would, but we... Okay, so right. look at that. Just a little bit there, okay? All right. Then oregano. Remember, we, we put in some tomato paste, and I want to put in about a whole teaspoon of oregano. Okay. It spreads out there. It looks like it's more than it is, but just a little touch there, okay? Okay. Not over the top. Yeah. Okay. Then caraway. A lot of people like put, to put caraway in their beef stew. Yeah. And, uh, well, it doesn't hurt anything to put it in here either. So, And I've seen that recommended. It's not an un-Hungarian thing to do. Okay. So I'm putting in about two teaspoons there. Okay. Because this is lots of, lots of stuff. We need lots of caraway there. And I've got some nice fresh rye bread to eat with this. Oh, so this we, is you know, we don't good. Want, we don't want to have too much flavor contrast there. Right. So, okay, here we go, folks. So now into our beautifully simmering, bubbling mixture here. Here we go. There it All is. Right. And then I'll stir it up a little bit here. And that looks Yeah, a good gorgeous. habit to get to when you're doing these big pots of soup is get in the habit of when you lift up the lid to turn it so that the water pours into the pot, not otherwise. Right. All experienced cooks will know that. Um, right, right. And then by the magic of television, what is this? <gasps> It's Hungarian goulash. Oh, it's goulash. Hungarian goulash that's already been um, simmering for two hours. Right. And it smells wonderful. It looks a little different, doesn't it? Yes, it than does. the other stuff. And here, here is how it looks different. The grease kind of goes to the top. 
Okay, you can see then, you know, that's kind of a sign that something like this is done. Unfortunately, the grease keeps going to the other side, but can you see that uh, kind of like a swirl there of, okay, so if you wanted to take some off, some of the fat off, that would be a good time to do this, okay? Do we want to do that or are we you okay can. with it? You can. Let's take a little can. bit off, okay. Okay. I'll use this handy bowl. Yeah, and do you want to use... I'm and I'll, I'll simply I'll simply take a spoon like this, right? And we'll drain a little bit of this off here and there. It's right. Okay. Mm-hmm. There, we've just taken off calorie after calorie, huh? Calories actually in the fat. Hmm. That was easy. Yeah, there are more elaborate ways to do this. Now we end up removing a little bit of the broth, but. You know, when you put in uh, two pints of water, you know, you got plenty anyway. Right, right. So we took a little bit off here, so it's a little healthier now. Now we can put on that um, sour cream without feeling as bad about it. Huh? That's good, Father. Okay, so. Okay. There we go. Lots of oil there. I don't want to take off more than that. All right. Okay, and it's okay. heating up. So then the question with this then is uh, what? Well, we have, we have to thicken this. And we'll do that uh, with the uh, cornstarch. So we have some cornstarch here. And I'd say about, again, this is a big batch, right? Um, I'd say three tablespoons of cornstarch. Okay, so I'll do, I'll, I'll, I'll actually starch. measure that, Father. Okay. Okay. I'm not against it. Do you want to put it in? I think something like this is fine. One, two, three. Okay, nice. And then water. I'll leave it. Well, I'll leave it here for now because uh, this isn't quite as hot as I would like it to would be. Would you yet. like me to turn it up a little? Sure. Here you go. We're not and gonna then do it meanwhile, again. we can what? start on the salad right. while we're waiting for this to heat up a little bit. And so, when are you going to add the pasta to it? Um, right. Um, well, actually. Once we see it start to boil, we'll add the pasta. Okay. All and right. here, I'll say a couple of things about pasta here. We can go ahead and put that, okay. that lid on. And then uh, we can serve this goulash. For one thing, we could put potatoes in it. We put no potatoes in it. Um, but even if you do, I mean, you still want a hearty meal. You could put it on a pasta like rotini. Regular noodles, I don't know. It just seems to me things fall off of them too much. So I like this corkscrew pasta more. For, okay. for it to really kind of catch on. And then what I do is, remember all that water I put on there, before I thicken it, I'll put the pasta right in there. You know, when it's going at a pretty decent boil, right at the, I can just mm -hmm. turn up the heat a little bit. I can add a little bit of water if I want to because butter? that water will be absorbed by the pasta. And then, then we have nice, uh, what, nice, uh, what, sauce covered noodles everywhere. Right, it's, it. okay. it's starting to boil right now. Just to How let wonderful. You know. if you'll, let's give it another stir then, if you'll go ahead and get that and stir it. Now, what I'd like to do tonight, though, is the halfway house between pasta and potatoes. What we have is Italian gnocchi here. It means knees. These, these are nice little potato dumplings. It's a kind of pasta that's made with uh, potatoes, I think riced potatoes mixed with a little bit of flour, maybe a little bit of egg in them as well. And uh, what? We're going to go ahead and put those in so we have these big chunks. But we could do both just for fun. Just for fun. Call? That's okay. all right. Okay. So I'll go ahead and cut this open a little bit here. And you say that it is cooking. So it I'll, is. Put in, I'll put in maybe half of these then. It was well. Yes, see it? it is. How wonderful. Well. Yes, yes. Okay. So what do you want okay. to do? Okay. Well, just so I don't have as big of a splash, I'm going to put these on on our little plate that I'm using now as a, um, as a spoon rest. That's good. Okay, and I'm gonna put half of these in then. Uh -huh. But you know what, if we're gonna go ahead and commit to both pasta and this, then I'm gonna go ahead and open up the pasta. Okay. And again, we gotta be very precise about how much pasta oh, goes sure, in. Oh, sure, sure. There, I, I think we need that much. I I'm going to introduce you to Emeril. We need that much. Would you like to meet Emeril? I would love to meet Emeril, although, again, I don't know that Emeril really would care to meet me, but, you Why know, I mean, he? well, I mean, I don't well, think he has anything should, against me. What we should He's do. He's happy not knowing who I am. I well, think. <laughs> here's, the, here's the thing. The one guy that you would love is the cake boss. Oh. And he's in New Jersey, right? He um. is such a happy guy. 
And I know he's Catholic as well. Nice. Okay. Then he probably would like me. Yeah, he would like <laughs> you a lot. Um, so anyhow, are you going to put it in there or did you already do it? I already did it. I... Okay, when did you put the pasta in? I put the pasta in about... Oh, remember I just started doing that dumping yeah, there? right. And then right. I didn't put in the gnocchi yet. The gnocchi only take three minutes to cook, so I don't want them to be too mushy. So you want to do your pasta toward the end, and we're almost to the very end here of this project. Um, so, again, we're, again, I, I, I have no Hungarian blood in me. I have great respect for the Hungarians right. uh, and the Austro-Hungarian Empire and its great cultural heritage right. uh, to the world. And they have a wonderful king of wines in, in Hungary, which oh, nice. I've been to the head uh, judge's winery. Well. Okay. Yeah. And well, I got to tell you, it was Hungary, awesome. Hungary. Hungary. But don't get mad if you are Hungarian. I'm not doing this in a purist Hungarian way. Right. I think it's pretty nice goulash. And even though maybe some of the folks at home would never be caught dead, Right. Putting uh, pasta. Right. So what are you going to do with that right What in. are you going to do with this? There's a good question. That's a good question. That's the, yeah. That's the third thing we're doing. We're just getting a little bit outrageous here. I added a little bit of water to this. Right. You know, so we make sure we don't dry it up too much. Okay. And you know what? I might add even a little bit more. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Let me do this real quick. So folks, you're saying now he's adding other ingredients. Gee, we had this precise amount. Believe me, next time I make this, I'll forget how many glasses of water I put Don't in anyway. Don't worry, Father. And believe me, it'll taste great. I know. And it'll I, taste great for you, too. I folks do home. his printed recipes as well. So, <laughs> it'll be close. Yes, there we go. Okay, so this, okay. Uh, this rotini yeah. has probably been in there about three minutes. Now, they say on I'm the listening. box, I think nine to 11 minutes if I'm... Correct. Doing this correct. Um, oh, they say boil for seven minutes. Well, that's interesting. So four minutes, it's done. No, not really. I not mean, but, really. but realize when, when you when you have that there and it's boiling, that pasta is continuing to cook. And since we're not even taking out and straining it, it's going to keep cooking in the sauce. But you can also put the gnocchi in there. But I can now. Okay. And I'm, I, I think that's a brilliant idea. I know I'm good. Yes, yes, yes. Here we go. And then... We'll go like this. All right. And then I'm going to use this as a guide. So again, right. we don't uh, splash anybody, okay. including, including you. Including you. Exactly. Okay. All right. That looks really good. You want to bring the camera over and look at this because it's really different. I'm going to move and out here, of the I'm way. And here I'm going to fight with the gnocchi a little bit. I didn't bust it apart well enough. And that's okay. Oh, okay. That's not. I just had a gnocchi all over the floor, but okay. Don't worry about it. Right. Uh, we just don't want these sticking together. I think that's the only rule for cooking gnocchi right, if you're right. buying them from the store. Right. Um, okay, look, there's a little piece of carrot there. Very nice, very nice indeed. I'm sorry. Okay, so here is what we've got going here. We've got some noodles. Those noodles aren't finished yet. The gnocchi are supposed to, again, work, cook about three minutes. Again, cook, I mean, they just really have to be heated up. I think they're... They'll be just fine. And then, if things weren't outrageous enough, we're going to put little bits of biscuit dough in there as dumplings. So do you like carbs with your carbs? I do. So we're going to go ahead and try that, OK? OK, so you want me to open your biscuits up? Yeah, yes, yes. I bought grocery store biscuits. Uh, these happen to be oh. large biscuits. OK, so we've already got gnocchi and we've got rotini in there boiling. But I would like to also add some dumplings just to try this. We'll decide which one we like best with it. Okay, this is an experiment. We'll report later. So what I've done is I bought a little uh, what thing of uh, big biscuits, the grands. Okay, so I bought them. Here they are right here. Here's the biscuit dough ready to go. And what we're going to do is we're going to steam a couple of these. Okay. You're just going to put them on the top? Yes, but first I'm going to cut them. Right. And to little nice mini dumplings. Okay. Right? We don't want to have them too big. Mm -hmm. And Catherine, if you would like to add them, or I can, either way. Oh, I can. I have to get around you. A, yeah, if there's a way that we can do this, maybe you I'll do go that. Ahead and just try I'll, this. I'll yeah. cut and you do it. Perfect. 
So okay. we'll do six per thing. We're cutting them like little pizzas. And look at them floating there very nicely. Right. Okay, we're good. Okay. okay. Good, good, good. So I'm delicately, you don't want to try to make them sink to the bottom. You want right. to leave them at the top. Right. So that's why I'm putting them on so gently here. Mm hmm You know, Father, we've already made your salad before. So we're going to run out of time, and I want to show the Hungarian goulash. And we've got your recipe okay. already for the arugula salad. So what do you say that we show what the salad looks like, right? Great, okay. And then we don't have to make it because we've already got the recipe up there, and we're running out of time. Okay. This takes a while to make, right? It does, although we've got two different pots of it going. And yes. It's nice. Um, yes, this is a, a long time, though. You, It's not a very quick um, moment. So anyway, we're putting this in. Yes, and the uh, dumplings are expanding, Let's which is a good thing, just like oh, they wow. were. Wow. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is take uh, this handy spatula right. and make sure that we're not burning it too badly on the bottom there, especially with that pasta and gnocchi in there. we got to stir mm -hmm. it a little bit. We'll stir it a little bit. So and how long will you leave it in there, it hot, Father? Excuse me. Uh, well, 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 um, well, now, can we can we see this? Did we get a good look at this, how, how they've expanded? Okay. Now we'll let them steam a little bit. That'll then be it's good. done. And then it's done. So let me ask you a question. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. We didn't add our thickener. Oh, that's good, Father. Yeah. That mm. would be good. So you want to do that? You want to make a slurry? Yes, we'll make a slurry. All right, slurry. so make it in here, Father. That's easier. Oh, okay. Okay, so what do you add to your slurry? Uh, just water. All so. right, so that would be good. A nice and I've got cool a little water. thing that you can use, I think, in here somewhere. Um, hold on. Usually we have this thing already done. Okay, otherwise any okay, spoon is any fine. Okay, any spoon is fine, Father. Here, I'll use this one. Actually, um, this was the cool thing about this, is that cornstarch is really easy, easy to work with, actually, I think. I think so, too. I find trying to put flour in and it's try to really do It's really difficult. Yes, I'm not as good at that, so. No. And so... All right, I want to make sure there's no lumps or bumps or anything like that. But you know what you can do as a trick, Father? You can use a little sieve mm -hmm, to make sure you never get any bumps. Okay, so what do you think, buddy? Okay, let's take a look. Oh, looking pretty good. I think it's looking great. Okay. And now... Whoops! My collar fell out, but other than that, things are fine. Okay. Okay, I will pour in the cornstarch. Right. And my hands are clean. Okay. Okay. And there I'll just go. take that and put that in my pocket for the moment, right. just because this is a crucial moment here. Cute. I have to crucial. make sure this gets moved around. Okay. The cornstarch has to be moved around well. Right. Otherwise, we're going to have oh, all wow, kinds Father, of problems. Oh, wow, Father, it looks really sharp. Really wonderful. And you're going to serve it in bowls, or how are you going to serve it, Father? I prefer it in bowls. Which we uh, happen to have two wonderful bowls. Well, that's great. Isn't that great? So how long do you leave that in there, Father? Oh, just like when this... If you were doing this at home, it would be simmering at the end. As it's simmering, you throw in the pasta or your dumplings or your potato dumplings, whatever you're going to do, cook them just about amount the, the, the time that it says, or maybe even a little bit less. With well, the dumplings, maybe a little bit longer, but uh, yeah. you know, so that steam is cooking them. Uh, they're getting very right. So what I'm going to do right is get these really cute balls out. Okay, wonderful. So that you can those serve are, it in. Those are wonderfully cute balls. Right. Okay, and, and then. We need to take a short break, Father, and when we come back, we're going to show what it looks like. Beautiful. Okay? And we already have, like I said, the arugula salad already up on our website, and it's simple. Okay? Yeah. It's the orange glaze arugula salad. That's the orange do. glaze the arugula salad. But there's right. also another one with the Greek dressing on it. Okay, so. that's true. Okay, so we'll be right back on The Chef You and I. We are back on The Chef You and I with Father Andrew Umberg of St. Joseph Parish, and he is a wonderful culinary chef. But 
I want to say that we made Hungarians, you made your Hungarian goulash, and look at it. The camera's looking at it. It's beautiful. Those are the dumplings made just from a biscuit uh, dough right. on the top. Okay, so. Okay, so we'll scoop some in if that's okay. No, go right ahead. Okay, so we, we're going to have all the different furniture. Oh, look Woo. at how thick that gravy is. Oh, Father, that looks great. Wow. Beautiful. And I'd say that's about a portion right there. We'll make sure yeah. there's enough meat there. Okay. okay, all right. So if you'd put that down. And what I would like to do, Father, is put a plate down for the bread. Wonderful. Okay. And I'll scoop out some more of this. Oh, now look at this nice furniture in there. See how the rotini is really nice and the gnocchi in there? And it's not overwhelming. It's not all starch, right? It's uh, no. It has some starch in it. I'm putting a couple of biscuits in there. Speaking of starch, all right? Okay. Okay. So I'm going to put another little. I wish you would have cut more bread, but that's all right. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. We have some nice rye bread, some nice right? bakery rye bread. So that's really beautiful. And you know, this is going to be great for your family. And I can do this right here. If you'll move I'm over, okay. I'll bring it over here. And that's starting to boil a lot, so okay. I'll turn it down a little bit here. We don't want, we don't want to have this go. That's right. This recipe will be up on our website, the Chef You and I, which you can print out the recipe, Father. Okay. Everyone loves, and I would accompany this with a nice arugula salad, wouldn't you? Yes, that would be a very. Nice and we party. have that up on our recipe. We'll include that in this okay. program and we want to thank you so much thank you it's an honor to be here it's as a, always yes and it's the first time we're out of quarantine right yes yes right and, and there are 10 COVID people hairdo. and there aren't 10 people here either but what are we going to do at the end oh a dollop of sour a cream dollop of sour cream and i love sour cream so this is the type of meal you can have at lunch and it'll last you the right. rest of the day. Okay, that's Maybe even good. Maybe breakfast, it might last you the rest oh, of the day. Oh, you could eat it for breakfast knowing you, right? Good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's nothing that I would eat that I would not eat for right. breakfast. Right. Well, we want to say thank you for joining us again and bon appetit and salute. Hello. Thanks for joining us on the Chef You and I show today. We'll be back next week with another great and healthy recipe don't forget to visit our website, thechefyouandi.com, for all of our featured recipes, cooking tips, and clips of the show.